Guys, for all the solutions of this book, visit forthesakeofeducation.com. I've been working hard of putting all the problems into one convenient place for you to be able to do your homework easily. So pay us a visit. All right, guys, we're going to do these two problems that said replace the loading on the plane by a single resultant force and specify where its line of action intersects a vertical line across member AV measured from point A, which is right here. And the second one is uh, a horizontal line through member CV measured from point C. And even though it's not in the graph, point C is right here. That's where C is. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing that you got to do is calculate the resultant force in X and Y components. So sum of the forces in the X is equal to this component of this force right here and this component of this force right here, which respectively are 900 times 3 over 5, and we're assuming going to the right is positive, and minus 400 times 4 over 5. And this comes out to be 540 minus 320, which means that it is 220 newtons. And that's it for the sum of the forces in the x. Now the same thing for sum of the forces in the y. Sum of the forces in the y is this 400 newton force going down, this 600 newton force going up. The y component of this 900 newton force, which is this one right here, and the y component of this 400 newton force, which is this one. Now respectively, Let's write them down, minus 400 plus 600 minus 900 times 4 over 5 plus 400 times 3 over 5. And when you plug all this into your calculator, you get that it's negative 280 newtons. And that is the resultant force in the y direction. Now let's find the magnitude and the angle of this horizontal force. Now the magnitude can be calculated by doing uh, 220, the x component square plus the y component square, all square rooted by the Pythagorean theorem. And this comes out to be 356.1 newtons. That's a five, I swear. Okay, now to find the angle, this is the x-axis and we know that the force looks something like 220, 280, I would say it would look something like that. Um, to find this angle right here, we got to do the tangent inverse of minus 280 over 220. And this comes out to be minus 51.8 degrees. So assuming this is positive, it comes out to be minus 51.8 degrees. Uh, some, some teachers require you to have positive angles, so you can add 360 degrees plus 360, put in parentheses there, and you get 308.1 degrees. They want you to give basically this angle, which is the same thing, but anyways, the resultant force is equal to 356.1 newtons at an angle of 308.1 degrees. Okay, now let's find the distance in which this force could be applied from point A in this vertical line created by point A and point B. And how do you find that? The first thing that you got to do is find the moments about A, and I'm going to assume kind of clockwise is positive. And this is equal to this X component of the 400 pound force applied right here, which is 400 times 4 over 5 
because it's only the x component, the y component is not generating no moment, uh, times the distance, which is 1, uh, minus y minus, because it's 900 force, the x component is trying to turn it clockwise, therefore it's negative, so it's 900 times 3 over 5, again, only the x component is generating a moment, times the distance from A, which is 2.5, which is 1.5 plus, I mean 1.5 plus 1 is 2.5. Now there's two more forces, which is the 600 force, which is this distance times this distance right here, which is minus 600 times 0.5. Y minus because it's also trying to turn it clockwise. And the last one is this 400, which is times this distance right here, which is trying to turn it counterclockwise, therefore it's positive, plus 400 times 1.5. So when you plug all this into your calculator, you should get negative 730 Newton meters for the moment about A assuming counterclockwise is positive. And now the last thing that we got to do is find the distance at which this force would be applied in a vertical line from A to B. I mean, denoted by A and B. You know that the sum of the moments is equal to the force, only the x component, because the y component wouldn't be generating any moment, times d, which is the distance from a. Now, you know that if you have a line here, right? This is a, and this is b, and you have a line, let me put it there, and you know that the moment is negative, assuming counterclockwise is positive, therefore the moment is going to turn this line this way. You know that it has to be in this direction because the x component, which is 220, is going to the right. Therefore, you know, it has to be above it. It can't be below it because if it was somewhere over here, then you would want to turn it the other way and that's not what we have so the sum of the moment is uh, I'm sorry the moment about a is 730 the x component is 220 and d is the variable we have to find so if you solve for d just some basic math you get that it is equal to 3.318 meters. So it would be someone, if this is 2.5, it would be somewhere around here, I would calculate, where this force will be applied for the first part of the problem. Let's do the second part of the problem, which is not that long, we already did half the work, which is um, we already found the resultant force. Remember we said that the force is equal to 356.1 newtons at an angle of 308.1 degrees. Then uh, we know that the X component is equal to 220 and the Y component is equal to negative 280. And now we need to find the some of the moments at C to do the second part of the problem, assuming counterclockwise is positive. Remember I said C was here because it's not in the graph. It's a little mistake the book made. And this is equal to the 400 is not generating any moment because it's applied right at the point. So it's not a problem. The 600 is trying to turn the whole structure counterclockwise, therefore it's positive, times 1, which is the distance from the point. Now, we have the x component of the 900 Newton meter force, which is also trying to turn it counterclockwise, so it's positive, so it's 900 times 3 over 5, 
times this distance right here, which is 0.5. Now the y component of this force is trying to turn it clockwise, therefore it's negative. 900 times 4 over 5 times this distance right here, which is 1.5. Almost there, we're missing two more. First, the y component of this 400 newton force, which is trying to turn the structure counterclockwise plus 400 newtons times, uh, I'm sorry, it's not four, it's a three over five times 1.5 again. And then the last one is the X component of this 400, which is negative because it's trying to turn it this way, times four over five times two because is this distance right here. So when you plug all this into your calculator, you should get that this is equal to negative 490 Newton meters. Assuming counterclockwise is positive. And now from point C, we got C here and we got B here. We got this line and we need to know where is this force applied. And remember this force looks something like this, but only the Y component is generating a moment. The X component is not generating a moment vertically. So you know it's negative, so you know that it's actually going clockwise and you know that the point is to the right because it's going down since it's negative and it's trying to turn it clockwise. Now this distance d, so to find it, we basically do sum of the moments of c, which is 490, which is equal to, um, actually, let me write it down a little better, make it clear. So sum of the moments of c is equal to the sum of the moments of the force in y direction times the distance t. This is equal to 280 times t, and sum of the moments of c is 490. You solve for d, and you should get that it is equal to 1.75 meters. So it should be somewhere right here. So final answer for the second part.